Hey man, uh, this is a response to uh, kind of a newer Christian who has a problem um, hanging out with other Christians, professing believers that are um, talking like they don't care about obedience as a very, 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 very serious thing. And uh, I thought it'd be really good to throw my two cents in there and see what I believe is right. Um, I'm going to make it real plain. Okay, here's actually an example. I remember their movie, that TV show, I used to love it, um, called the Dinosaurs TV Show, the old grandma in there. Um, there was one, a, 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 there was one uh, show where they had a, a dirty language, a bad language, a bad word in the show. And uh, somebody on the TV said it because it was live TV and they accidentally said it. And then the baby started saying it in the, in the show all the time. And then the grandma said, I'm not going to read to you anymore if you're going to continue using that word. And he kept on saying it and she just ignored him. And wouldn't honor that word in the house. And she didn't smack him, didn't do nothing. Just said, you know what, I'm not going to honor that because I think it's wrong. And so um, I think it's really cool to learn how to figure out how close can you get to certain people. Because when they're speaking a different language, they're speaking another gospel. They're speaking about a gospel or they're, 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 they're turning lukewarm and they've, they've turned away from the true gospel. The true gospel, and uh, you embrace that, you're not going to be casual about sin. The last thing you're going to be is casual about sin. You're going to understand that all the things that you've done in your past have to be dealt with. How in the world can you be casual about sin now? After all that you had to do to clean up for everything in your life and all that you went through to get right with God. And if that's not what happened, I don't think you are right with God, plain and simple. And there's a lot of gospels out there who don't take seriously because I don't believe that they're regenerated by the Holy Ghost. So um, I, and to reply to how do you deal with these kind of people, you don't. <laughs> You let them go where they want it. You let them go because you don't have any fellowship with darkness. If anybody says, well, God understands and it's okay to sin. God wants, you know, compromise is okay. It's okay to use dirty language. We're all going to sin anyway. Stuff like this. This is absolutely not Christian. That is not the way someone who's living victoriously strong in convictions in the Lord. That is not God's standard. Uh, I remember one guy, he's not even alive anymore. He's another recently uh, deceased strong voice about righteousness. And he was saying something like, uh, um, that Jesus doesn't tolerate sin at all. Is if you think that Jesus tolerates sin, you don't know Jesus. Because the real Jesus doesn't tolerate sin at all. And if you know him on some distant level or something, that's whatever. I'm not going to validate for that. I won't vouch for that. But I'll tell you, there's a way that we ought to know him where any little thing is a really big problem. That's, that's how it ought to be. Uh, little compromises is not okay. Allowing dirty language to go on on your house is not okay. It'd be better to say, I'll go live by myself if you guys won't clean up your mouths. I'm not, or something like this. You're going to have to take a stand and realize people, we, we, we've got to start to disrupt things a little bit more and say, look, a lot has been going on. We've been getting comfortable with all these things. We've kind of packed it down on our foundations of this is how it is. This is all right. Well, God doesn't agree. Amen. God doesn't agree that this, that all these kinds of things is really all right. It's actually not all right. And it's important that we agree with God because he doesn't change. We kind of gravitate towards it so we can have peace among one another, but it doesn't bring revival and it doesn't bring the Christian church into a place where she can be effective. And this is against God. When we're against revival, we're against God. When we're against faithfulness to God and intricate details being dealt with in our life, we're turning our backs on God. That, there's no nice way to say it. And if people don't see that, they don't see God. They don't see salvation. They see an angle of it like the cults. They say the verses, but they don't really know the Lord. They can come against some sins. They can come against certain things. Well, bless God, I tell you, if you don't get stuck in your growth, you're going to understand a lot of things that you may not have even known that that is sin that you didn't know. But now you know it's sin because now you know God. And now you know that God is very, very sure and pure about a lot of things and how the home is going to be in order, how your business is going to be in order, how you do your taxes, how you do everything is going to be very, very conservative. It's going to be very, very um, pure. You're going to have very high convictions with everything you do because that's just the given. And if it's not what you have, then something is wrong with your version of the Holy Spirit. It's just, it isn't really right. So if we don't understand that, then I want you to know that there's something of the Lord that you, you just, you just, you must not know about it then. Or you've lost that place of strong conviction. Remember what Paul said, what vehement it wrought in you. 
You know, it was such a radical hatred for sin, such a radical abandonment and no compromising, even a little bit, a little compromise, everything comes unraveled. That's why it has to be very consi consistently strong in every way. And we don't take bribes. We don't take a gift. You know, sometimes a cool person comes along and they got everything right except for one thing. And you're like, well, it probably won't come out. Nothing will come undone. I won't have, you know, we have to deal with these things. We can't say, well, that's all right. Cause no, they bring in the flat earth. They want to bring in some weird thing. They want to talk about stuff that doesn't make any sense. Things that's not fruitful or things that just isn't even true or things that's plain and, plain and simple and not even godly. And we have to say no, you know, one place we does differ could be a big problem later on. People don't want to take a heavy stance against compromises of every level, big and small, then something is going to go wrong. We're, we're going to lose that presence, you know. Um, the Holy Club run by Whitfield and Wesley, they kicked out over 800 men out of that group because they didn't want to, they didn't want to risk losing their uh, the the, uh, the presence of God in their they had a certain tone of their group and they didn't want to lose that tone so anybody come in with a new idea they would remove them because they were so certain about holding on to that strong conviction knowing that I must deal with everything I must right my wrongs I must clean things up I must straighten out the crooked paths in my life because God is coming for a church that's not playing church Amen. So, amen, uh, that's my answer to how do you deal with people who talk like that? Run. There's nothing, you have no fellowship with darkness, and that's what they're speaking. They're speaking the language of darkness, and you can let them know, I'm not going to be reading to you anymore. I'm not going to be doing the things that we used to do anymore until you clean up your act. Grandma wouldn't do it for the dirty mouth baby, and you're not going to be doing it for the dirty mouth lukewarm Christians. Lukewarm Christians. Amen. So we got to let them know. Like, if, if you're going to continue speaking like that, that's going to change our life. That's going to change the way I identify and, and connect with you. Or our connections are going to be getting connected. You're, you're disconnecting my connection to God by me trying to agree with you. Because me trying to agree with you is messing me up with the Lord. That's, that's what it ought to do. That's what it does do. And so if you really love the Lord, you can't be fellowshipping with people who speak a compromised language. It's simply there's no fellowship with light and darkness. And that is exactly what they're preaching. They're preaching doctrines of devils. And you have no fellowship with them. So that's my, that's my thought on that. Um, God bless everybody. And have a great weekend.